Welcome back. The next company to present is Saniona, and I'm pleased to introduce the CEO of Saniona, Thomas Felthus. I'll uh, pass the word over to you, Thomas. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, and thank you to ABG for inviting me to this conference. Uh, and thank you to investors for listening for this presentation. So my name is Thomas Feltus. I started as CEO uh, on the 2nd of May. Uh, I have worked at sea level uh, and board level within life science industry for more than 20 years. I'm co-founder of Sanyona, and I've been CFO for this company uh, from 2012 to 2020. I took uh, the company public in Sweden and listed it on Nasdaq stock on main market in 2016. I have significant experience in business development. In Sanyona alone, I've made several collaborations, uh, agreements, out licensing deals, spin outs, joint ranges, and so forth. I decided to leave Sanyona in March 2020 uh, in relation to the implementation of Sanyona's go to market strategy in the US. Uh, I'm now back uh, in C as CEO to oversee Sanyona's refocus strategy on iron channel research and development and to explore partnering opportunities to, work, to advance its leads assets. Next slide, please. So, Sanyona is today uh, listed on Nasdaq Stockholm main market. We are a clinical stage biotech company focused on developing therapeutics for rare diseases. We have uh, made highly valuable preclinical and clinical assets, which provides multiple possible ways forwards. We have a unique uh, drug discovery platform, which provide a steady stream of new products into the pipeline. And then we have uh, several clinical assets, including SAN 903, which will be ready for phase one uh, very soon, and SAN 711, where we have completed phase one study also very soon. And then Tesomet, which has, uh, where we have completed two phase 2A studies uh, in two rare uh, indications, Paravillus syndrome and hypothalamic obesity. The company started phase 2B studies in, in uh, this winter, and within that has been put on hold. We are currently planning to develop SAN 903 internally and uh, to outline seven, SAN 711 and Tesomet. Uh, however, we may not it up exactly like this, and this I will come back to. Uh, before that, uh, I think it would be appropriate to take a two year step two years back. And next slide, please. So during the last two years, Sanyona has aimed at to become a commercial stakes biotech company in rare diseases based on its lease as a Tesomet. This strategy implied a US corporate headquarters and US NASDAQ listing. This spring, it became clear that this strategy has failed. The planned phase two studies were put on hold and the US NASDAQ listing was no longer an option. Market cap has dropped with not more than 95% over the last 18 months without any clinical failures. In April, market cap was just about 100 million, which was less than the quarterly burn rate. Everybody could see that this situation was not sustainable. So Jörn Dreyer, the chairman, uh, reached out to me in April and asked whether I would be interested in stepping in as CEO. I said, yes, I'm a founder and I know this company. It's a fine company. It has a great pipeline, significant, very interesting platform and many highly talented people. I'm sure that we can turn this around. So the low market cap now does not reflect the value of these assets. It is dictated by mistrust to the previous management and concerns about financing. Next slide, please. So after the structure in April, or restructuring in April, Sanyona has again become a Scandinavian company. It is, uh, the US operation has been closed and future annual operating expenses has been reduced by 75%. So one month in the old company is four months in the new company. Um, 
We have transformed the company into a more focused and cost-effective organization that leverages our core uh, strengths within drug discovery and development in iron channels and CNS. All the values in the lead, uh, lead, in the lead assets, including Tizomat, SAN 7.11, and SAN 903, has, have been preserved. We are now focused on establishing partnerships on our lead assets to generate non-diluted funding and become less dependent on the financial markets. We know that model works. Next slide, next slide, please. So we know that the market works. Um, we have, until I left in 2020, gained significant experience with this model. We were have generated close to 400 million crowns in income through partnerships. And we're still illegal to receive earnouts, milestones, and royalties from several of those agreements. The deal making follows many different paths. Research collaborations with the big pharma companies like Janssen, Pfizer, and Bernard Engelheim, development agreements with mid sized companies such as Medix, spin outs where Seniona uh, has capitalized its shareholdings uh, following a trade sale or through the sale of shares hold in the company over the stock market. And also then spin outs where shares has been distributed. Uh, to the shareholders under Lexisir in Sweden. Next slide, please. So I have a strong team behind me, uh, which can and will support me in the operational level and on the BD activities. And it looks like this today. So we have Karen Sania as CSO, Janus Larsen as Head of Clinical Development, uh, and Pali Christofferson, who is VP of Research. And then uh, we have Anita Milan, who is supporting me as CFO. She has a lot of experience with financial reportings uh, for listed companies. So Kain, Janus, and Palip, they have uh, deep knowledge of these program programs. They work together with big farmers and biotech companies for more than 20 years. They've been sitting in steering committees. They've been involved in the business development activities in the past. And uh, they have strong communication skills and they can speak with everybody. So I can take advantage of this. If this is a unique part of this company, the scientists are also working in business development. In addition to this, we have also uh, several consultants, including a medical doctor who will take over as chief medical officer at part-time basis, and then a business development person in the US who have been deeply involved in the clinical development and neuroparabilis and uh, hypothalamic obesity studies. Next slide, please. Um, so, we have a fantastic pipeline. On the top, you have Tisofensin, which has been partnered up with Medix. Medix has conducted a successful phase three study uh, for general obesity and filed for market approval in Mexico. The regulatory process has taken longer than expected, partly because of uh, problems with COVID. We understand now that Medix will have a meeting with the regulatory agency in May and hopefully we can come to a final decision this year. Medix has been granted commercial license in Mexico and Argentina. We were attracted to double digit royalties on sales, which could provide additional income to the company in the coming years. In case of a positive outcome in Mexico, we would also have the option to roll out the program in the rest of South America and as well as certain Asian countries. Since those countries we use Mexico as a reference country. Below you have Tisomet, which is developed for the two rare diseases, Paravilli syndrome and hypothalamic obesity. Sanyona has an open IND and an agreed protocol uh, with the US agency and several other countries to start such a phase three study, phase two B study. The studies have been put on hold due to funding uh, limitation and we are now positioning for part time. And there are great interest. Below that, you have San San Milan. This compound is designed to increase the efficacy of specific neurons uh, in the spinal cord, which controls the pain signal to the brain. So it's a new concept in for pain management. We have strong animal data from animal models in chronic pain, intragenital system, and for itching. So it has many potential indications. We expect to report top line data uh, from phase one study 
uh, over the summer. This study includes also a PET scan study uh, on selected patients where we will be able to see the receptor coverage of the compound and uh, in the spinal cord. And, um, and this is important for us because it could guide us for uh, the phase two study because we can see at what dose we will get the, uh, the coverage which is necessary for the maximum effect of this compound. So there's, there's a lot of important readout coming out of this program this summer. And again, this program is part of a position for, uh, for part nine. And then finally, we have Sanmiro-3, which is blocking a calcium-activated uh, potassium channel expressed in many types of uh, immune cells and uh, fibroblasts. The product is designed to prevent proliferation and expression of cytokines by activated immune cell and fibroblasts. This means that it will prevent inflammation and fibrosis scaring, which is uh, involved in many chronic diseases. We have strong data in animal models of rare diseases, such as idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, as well as more common diseases, such as IBD. We are currently planning to keep this product in, in internal and then we will uh, hopefully be able to start a phase one study at the year end. Next slide, please. So in addition to this, we have a drug discovery platform for development of new therapeutics, uh, which modulates ion channels. Ion channels have been validated for treatment of virus diseases, including diseases of the CNS. Uh, this important class of target represent a huge potential. Uh, for developing of new th therapies, since only 20% of the known ion channels have has been utilized uh, for development of new drugs. We have worked in this field for more than 20 years. We generated a large library of uh, ion channel compounds. We have a huge number of data which has been integrated into our prior database, which can be utilized through the use of artificial intelligence for further research programs. This program may, platform may also be used for partnering, uh, such as we have demonstrated with research collaboration with Pfizer, Janssen, and more recently, during our incline. Next slide, please. So this slide illustrates the ion channel drug discovery engine. CNS drug are discovered through an iterative process. It requires a lot of disciplines, such as chemical design, precision biology, in vivo stability, target engagement, translation, and so forth, in vivo in pharmacology. We have all those in disciplines in-house and are only outsourcing world chemistry to a long-term partner in India. The data from each compound are then collected, put into the database, and then we compare to what we have predicted, the physical, chemical, and biological properties, and this enables us to refine the model and then design new compounds and then at final you get to the final drug. Thank you. Next slide, please. So this platform has delivered uh, several clinical assets, including SAN711 and SAN903. But we have further program is just below the waterline of this iceberg. We have informed the market that we will select a new candidate from preclinical and clinical development very soon which is illustrated with SAN triple X in this slide. We have also SAN triple Y, which is a in lead optimization. And thereby we may be able to leave another clinical candidate within the next 12 to 18 months. These two programs are positioned towards different types of epilepsy. They modulate two different ion channels, which have generally generated significant interest in the pharmaceutical world. We believe, we believe that we have two very attractive and coming programs with here. In addition to this, we have two partner pro research programs, one with Bering Engelheim for schizophrenia, which also have moved nicely over the last 12 months, and then a joint venture, Cephogenics in migraine, which again has moved in, uh, over the next uh, last 12 months. These programs are funded by partners and are actually covering one third of our research cost. So there's a lot of active programs, as you can see, and we are able to uh, uh, develop a very large group of compounds internally, which can be explored internally for development or uh, in partnerships. 
This means also, as you see, that we are able to expand our internal clinical pipeline fast if we are to outlast in Tisomet and send 711 over the next 12 months. Next slide, please. So going back to my initial slide, we have a significant number of assets and there are a multiple possible paths forward. We have an iron channel drug discovery engine, which we expect to deliver a steady stream of new clinical candidates. We tend to develop SAT903 internally and plan to initiate phase one clinical studies by the year end. The candidate has many potential indications, including rare diseases such as IPF. And then we are exploring outliers opportunities for SAN 711 and Tisomet. It, cannot, it may be that we not uh, that we will not outliers and SAN, or we will outliers and SAN 903 instead of one of these two compounds. If we were to retain SAN 711, then I think we would conduct a basket study comprising a relatively small group of patients in different indications, such as. Uh, trigeminal neuralgia and migraine, neuropathic pain indications and itching. And the aim here is then to explore the potential in each of those indications for further clinical development. It may also end up that we have keptisomat. And in that case, I think that we would start with hypothalamic obesity. It is a much easier patient population to work with than Prada Willi syndrome. We have very strong data in this indication. Recruitment will be faster. The investigator and the key opinion leader, Ulla Feldt Rasmussen, is very supportive and enthusiastic about this compound for this indication. And then many of the patients in the proof of concept study wanted to continue treatment following the completion of the study over 12 months. So this is a very strong sign. And I believe that risk is much lower here uh, the market is also there, it's basically the same size as Paravili syndrome. So in case of funding limb constraints, I would prioritize hypothalamic obesity and some of our earlier compounds first. So summing up a little with the coming milestones. Next slide, please. Uh, we expect uh, top line data from our phase one study for San and Erwin within a few months. We will complete the preclinical development for SAN 903 and make it ready for phase one clinical studies also here over the summer. Then we hope to come uh, to a final conclusion on MEDIC's phase three program uh, and market, market, uh, authorization, uh, and then the potential for new royalties. We expect to present a new clinical candidate from our iron channel candidate. And finally, we are aiming at entering into a collaboration agreement with at least one of our lead assets within the next six to nine months. Thank you for your attention. Great, thank you very much for that presentation, Thomas. Um, a few questions then. A uh, first one, perhaps on on uh, on Tessimet and what a potential acquirer would need to do to sort of re reinitiate that clinical program. Um, how easy is it to, to sort of restart that? What is it that is sort of still in place and, and what needs to be uh, rebuilt, I guess, to, to uh, reinitiate those, uh, those programs? Okay. As I mean, I think that the, it's a start over, to be frank. Um, so the clinical pro, the, 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 you could say the sites were initiated, but recruitment was not really started. And uh, and therefore there was no patient put on hold, but of course, uh, MedPace, which was the CIO, they have all the whole setup. They have contacted and set agreement up with uh, 40 centers for each indication or more, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that could be done faster. Mm -hmm. um, so they can step in the, the shoes of ours and and take it over from there if this is what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there are also potential for finding an amendment actually doing the study faster. We didn't, the previous man didn't speak about that uh, because uh, there was not an agreement about that with FDA, mm -hmm. but that could potentially also be happened. So there's the protocols are written, there's also even amendment to it. So it, it enabling the, these phase two studies to be 
turned into a pivotal study, you could say, and thereby sp spare a lot of years in clinical development. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of work is done. There's a often drug indication for both in both, and uh, there's an open IND. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, I guess uh, a question uh, on 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 investors' minds will be. Um, uh, given the given the strained financial situation, how sort of uh, pressured you are to to find a potential acquirer of Tesmet or, or or indeed Sun Seven Eleven, um, and having yeah. to sort of agree a, a quite significant discount. Um, uh, yeah, how yeah. how should how should one think about that? <laughs> uh, so yeah, I need to be careful here because we we have just about to 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 publish a financial report in a, in a week or so. Um, so the we had in cash 356, 356 million crowns in cash mm. at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And that's quite a lot of money, I would say. And uh, in the current setup, our burn rate will be, on the base case, 70 million crowns. So that could be to several years. Uh, but the burn rate was quite high in, in the old setup. Uh, I think in Q4, we had a uh, burn rate about 130 million crowns. And it, Q1 is probably going to be in the same level because, you know, they were in clinical trial, they were full set, the, the real turn of change happened at the end, the end of March and the, actually in the end of April. So there's four months burn rate at this level. And then there's cost for shutting down the study. And there will also be severe cost for the existing people who, who was laid off. Um, and so there is uh, a lot of money coming out of the company uh, in, in these two quarters here. And the full picture, uh, I don't have it yet, and, and I will not really comment on it. But still, there's a lot of money, and I I do believe that there should be at least a year of cash, and then also longer, but we have also a dip facility with Formula 1, which be, has to be paid at the, at the summer 2023, and, and, uh, uh, right? so, yeah. Um, so I, I I think that the, given the current financial ma market and and uh, um, the current the company's burn rate uh, and the company's market cap, uh, we will do a lot for making a collaboration with one of these lead assets within the next 12 months. Both in order to advance the asset, but also to get some cash in to to strengthen the balance sheet. Alrighty. And perhaps one final question then also, I guess one that will be uh, on, on people's minds. Um, you're obviously seemingly quite, uh, you know, up, upbeat and confident in, in being able to find a, a partner for one or more of these assets. But um, in a scenario for, for whatever reason, uh, you're not able to strike a deal for either Testament or San 7 and 11 um, and, and therefore unable to raise that non-dilutive uh, financing. What is the sort of backup plan or, or how does it look in that scenario or and then in that case we will go to the market i think we have cut it down to what i think is is a very lean organization mm -hmm. and, uh, and we think that the real value is actually our ability to to make new drugs and mm -hmm. uh, we could make collaborations on on the early asset also on our service platform mm -hmm. and thereby actually going back to a cash neutral situation uh, the first two years of this company's life we were profitable uh, so we actually made money by making research collaboration mm. um, prior to get, getting listed in, in, in Stockholm. Mm. So we have been there before, uh, but I do think that I have significant interest with these assets. Mm. In, in, I've spent one third of my time in, in business development meetings since I started in, on May 2nd. Mm. A lot of companies has, have reached out to us mm. uh, following the announcement in the end of April. And, and asked into the to our clinical programs because they may fit into their pipeline. Mm. So if you have a cash rates with rare disease company in, in US with a product on the market, uh, this may, may fit very well into the to, to their pipeline what's going to be next, right? so mm. the same. Mm. Yeah. I might wager your last question. I, I don't know how able you are to answer it, but, but in these BD discussions that you're having, um, are you able to say whether um, uh, whether any term sheets? Uh, no, no, no. I, said, I can't do that. As soon as we, as sure. a, you know, so the early discussion you can talk about, and that's been a lot. Um, 
Um, as soon as you go to terms, you then everything shuts down, of course, because um, then I would say the same thing. There's a lot of interest, so to say, uh, because this is critical information. Sure. Yeah. Fair enough. Thomas, we're, we're out of time. Thank you very much for, uh, for, for, okay. for an interesting presentation. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.